We live in an age of instant information So isn't it strange that things have been hidden away from us Governments think we need to gain their trust But it's the other way around, just take a look Nothing tells us more than raw data does So it's important it's all available to us Plus, put up for debate and looked at by the public's gaze Hello, just a quick note on today's podcast, which was actually recorded last week, which was prior to Ellen Powell leaving as the CEO of Reddit, and a uh, few other little bits of drama concerning what is happening over there. Uh, The point of the podcast was to discuss the more general question of how possible it is to make businesses out of communities, but we certainly do spend a fair bit of time discussing some aspects of what's happening with Reddit. And while we don't ever actually discuss Reddit's management by name, given the drama over her leaving the job, I wanted to add this little note in case people are wondering why we didn't mention the leadership change at all. Uh, Thanks and enjoy the podcast. Hello and welcome to the Tech Dirt Podcast. I am Mike Masnick. Thanks to everyone who's been joining us here in the community of Tech Dirt Podcast listeners. It's been a lot of fun hearing from all of you and hearing what you have to say. While not as many people listen to the podcast as read the site, I've already noticed that I've been able to have some really great and in-depth conversations with those of you who listen to the podcast uh, when I've run into you. And that's really great and part of the reason why it's fun to build something that creates a community. However, with communities come certain challenges, as the site Reddit has been learning recently. We don't necessarily need to go into all of the specific issues that Reddit has run into in the last few months or so, but suffice it to say that it has led many people uh, to start asking if it's even possible to run a large community site as a business, as there are plenty of stories of giant online communities that eventually come crashing down. From Usenet to GeoCities to Tribe to Ning to Friendster to Dig, and Dig, of course, whose collapse is really what fueled Reddit's growth spurt in the first place. Uh, Some are arguing that, by its very nature, community and companies are antithetical, and that the efforts to make the business side sustainable, which include things like advertising and often heavier-handed moderation and limits on content in order to not scare away those advertisers, will, by their very nature, drive a wedge between the organization and the community that it's supposedly supporting. Of course, there's also the general argument that pretty much all communities have a finite lifespan in that there's something of a fashion or a fad anyways. At some point, when your parents join the community, it becomes tempting for the cool kids to decamp for someplace cooler and more fun. Older communities become a punchline rather than a place that survives and continues to grow. So here's the discussion we're going to be holding today. Is it truly possible to build a sustainable, large online community? And could there be a company behind such a community? Or is this an impossible dream that companies keep trying to achieve, all of whom are destined to eventually run into some sort of insurmountable roadblocks? Here to discuss our regular co-hosts, both of whom have tremendous experience with online communities. We have Dennis Yang and Hirsch Reddy. Hirsch, who is back after missing the past few weeks on the podcast. So since you've been gone, we'll start with you on this one. Do you think it's possible to build a large online community that can survive for the long term? I think the it, it really depends on what your def- definition is for an online community. To some extent, you could say something like Craigslist is an online community, right? Like there's, there's yeah. people making posts. It's, and yeah. I mean, that's an interesting one because it's funny because we, we, someone brought that up earlier when we were kind of thinking about the topics for the podcast. And I guess that's true, but it's not so much of a community in that there's, you know, beyond sort of the posts, there's not as much sort of response and discussion. But uh, but maybe I'm trying to define yeah. it too narrowly. Yeah, You're I mean, right. So I mean, there there are certain parts of Craigslist that kind of have mm-hmm. that community feel to That's it, true. right? Like your misconnections, or like sure. there, there there are certain things. I guess you know there are certain recurrent posts mm-hmm. or themes that that have the feel of an online community. But yeah, but I, that, I do but, I do see what you're saying. And, there, and at the same time, people have certainly been arguing that Craigslist may be beginning to lose its steam as well. Sure, sure. 
It's definitely being carved up by other people. Okay, so if you don't want to say Craigslist, if you want something where it's more interactive and thread-like, um, I think you could argue that YouTube hmm. is definitely a community. There's a lot of... Yeah? It, you have threads under each video. Uh, to some extent, I think every YouTube um, channel maker... I mean, right. those are like almost like subreddits. There's like a huge dialogue going but, on. But is YouTube the community, or are the individual channels the community? And then in the same vein, is, yeah. is Reddit the community, or are I mean, Reddit is I think the community here, and the subreddits are actually you know composed like the 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 relation between the subreddits and the and the full Reddit is kind of what what really exploded in these past few weeks, I think. I mean, there's a, I mean, maybe we're going a little bit off topic here, but I mean, that's a great question. The question is like, why should all these subreddit communities be aggregated on one site? To some mm -hmm. extent, Reddit is just a platform for these communities, right? So if you want to talk about uh, the long-term sort right. of cohesion and survival of communities, to some extent, I actually think these communities actually migrate from platform to platform. And they're not necessarily I, all the same individuals. I mean, but I think I kind of disagree with you in terms of like, like, do you remember Ning? I, I don't mm -hmm. even know if they're still around. Like they initially were trying to build kind of only the subreddit part of Reddit, which mm -hmm. is each of these individual communities had their, you know, had their platforms on Ning. And I think the, the power of Reddit was that there's there's this kind of huge fire hose of people in the audience, and then you would kind of discover these subreddits. Whereas the the death of something like I mean, I think Ning is still around. I'm not even sure how they're doing. I don't know, but these small communities have no discoverability, right? So when you when you kind of don't have enough enough mass to drive to the to the niche sites, the niche sites are kind of dying. Mm, that wasn't right? the point I was making though. The point I was making was that so for example, if you go back like pretty far, maybe, you know, an internet, nothing's really far, but like, you know, there was these forums that were called the hard OCP forums, right? Mm -hmm. And they were like for people that were, you know, working on computers essentially. And then off of that, because there was like, they had this like general forum where people could make posts that didn't have to do with computers. And mm -hmm. the people there went off and spawned off a new forum called, you know, uh, general mayhem. And then that gen may, as it was called, you know, that stayed for a lot, mm -hmm. long period of time. But a lot of people off of that, forum actually just jumped off and went to Reddit. Some of them went to um, other places like, uh, you know, there was another site called Something Awful, which is still around, I think, and that yeah, had a huge number of people. Around. But you see people from the same usernames jump from these forums and they show up in, the, in, in other places and, they're, and they, uh, oftentimes if they were very witty and popular in one place, they'll be kind of witty and popular in another place. And for certain ones, like, so for example, let's say the programming forum, a subreddit for the programming language Go, right? Mm -hmm. There was a pretty healthy community on Google Plus for that. Mm -hmm. And I see the exact same people now on the subreddit for Go. And it's almost like that community moved off of Google they Plus. Migrated, and, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, they well, migrated, yeah. Well, I think, yeah, I mean, I think there's an interesting point there, which is really that, I mean, what makes communities, right, is the people, right? Mm -hmm. And so everyone gets so focused on the platform itself. And the platform, I think, is important. Um, yeah. But... What it comes back to in the end is always going to be the people, right? And so you can build a good community around good people. But, but the platform doesn't own the people, which is, I guess, right. the problem, right? So platforms come and go. The community kind of stays, and they'll find, they'll find the platform to right. use right, and to discuss. And, and so, you know, and, and that's where the conflict comes in. When you have a situation where you have, you know, and a lot of the problems with what's happened with Reddit now is that as they're trying to grow it as a business, I think they've, you know, they're trying to deal with the fact that there are parts of the site and parts of elements of certain communities that are, you know, unruly in, yeah. in some sense. And, mm -hmm. and so then the question is, do you try and control that uh, or not? And Reddit is trying to, to make some effort to do that and to change the site. And, that's at least angering a certain element of the community. I don't, you know, the question, there's a question of how large that really is. And then, you know, then they start to flow out to somewhere else. And sometimes you can survive that kind of thing. And sometimes it's really difficult. I mean, Dig, right, the, you know, which was sort of the, obviously the, the big predecessor to Reddit, um, they went through a similar sort of thing where they tried to change the site in a way that they claim would be better for the community, but which many people realized accurately was really better for monetizing right. and advertising, and then the people just left. Um, 
I see. And, and you think that's what Reddit is? Well, I, I, I mean, it's different. It's not, I don't think it's an exact parallel. I don't think they're going through the exact same thing. But to the same extent, like we were just discussing the fact that Reddit has changed very little, at least cosmetically, in the last, I mean, three, four years at least, right? Like they've taken yeah. a, a huge amount of investment, but we haven't at least seen a huge amount of change. And there's probably a lot yeah. of changes going on in the back end that we don't know about. Um, but they're being extremely cautious, right? Uh, and what, if, if you think about what the community is angry about right now, um, Dennis, correct me if I don't have the chronology right, but it seems like the first thing that happened in this current round of rage, because people are always mad for some sure. reason or other, but the, but the big round of rage happened, I think there were some subreddits that were banned. Yes. Right? Mm -hmm. And people made cries that this was about censorship, et cetera, because mm -hmm. other subreddits were not banned, you know, other offensive subreddits. That was the first little kernel. And then the second thing which made the second round of sort of rebellion happen was uh, the dismissal of certain employees, right? Mm -hmm. And one in particular. And one in particular. And you could argue the latter thing really shouldn't make the community that angry if it's, it's kind of like, okay, it's a company. They, they're going to have some turnover uh, of employees. Well, I think, uh, but, but, they shouldn't but need it, to go it to wasn't, the community. It was, it was a combination of factors, right? So, and I think that the dismissal of the one employee mm -hmm. was was kind of set off a bunch of other things. And, and this is not just like a random employee, it was the, the person who handed, handled the big uh, AMAs, the Ask Me Anythings. Mm. And in fact, last year when I did an AMA, the, mm. um, she was extremely helpful to me in terms of mm. getting it set up and, and making sure everything worked, worked right. And um, apparently was extremely helpful for the mods of different mm. subreddits. How would you rate her on a five point scale? <laughs> t total five, so it was perfect. Okay. But, uh, and, but, but I think what it crystallized was, you know, the AMAs have become a really big part of Reddit and, and it's a huge part of sort of Reddit's culture that mm -hmm. sort of sprung up from the community, not mm -hmm. from the company itself. And she was, you know, really for the past two years, you know, super helpful in terms of getting, especially like big name people mm -hmm. and kind of. Did, did it come out as to like why, why she was like, there oh. co I mean, the company officially says they won't comment. The yeah. stories that I've heard from different people seem to suggest uh, a, a few different things in terms of the direction that the company is trying to go with AMAs. And I know that mm -hmm. Alexis, um, you know, had posted something effectively saying that, you know, rather than focusing on bringing in like famous celebrities for like a one-off AMA, mm -hmm. our focus is really trying to get, you know, people like that to just use Reddit on a regular basis. Um, you know, which is, you know, there, there's got to be something more to it than that. <laughs> I mean, that's not a reason but, to yeah. let go uh, uh, Especially if she's been doing a, a five out of five job, yeah. whatever her job yeah. is. But, yeah. but, but part of the, so sorry, but to get to the, the point was that what a lot of the different subreddit mods were saying was that um, she, was, she was one person of the company who was actually very responsive to them and helpful to them and getting rid of her and not telling them about it, not giving them any pre-warning. So especially for the subreddits that host AMAs, they were suddenly left without someone to, to talk to. And that highlighted the fact that the company itself is, has not been particularly responsive at all to the mods, especially the mods that are running large sites that often need help and assistance mm -hmm. from the company. And they would reach out to people and nobody would respond and nobody would help them. And they've been yeah. a asking for new tools and new mm -hmm. features um, and fixing broken features, and, and they weren't getting any response back at all. So then the one person who is actually responsive from the company and is actually helpful on a major feature on the site, which is the AMA, to suddenly fire her with no warning and no one to sort of step in in place for, for AMAs that were scheduled, just set off this chain reaction of all these mods saying like, you know, we've been treated really badly by the company, and the one person who is actually helpful has just been let go without any communication, no warning for us. And so that set off the train. So it wasn't just this, like, mm -hmm. you know, yes, like she was a really good and helpful employee for that job. There, there may be other reasons why she was let go. I'm sure there probably are that we don't know, that we may never know. Um, but... You know, it was really this sort of, you know, that was a, a symptom of, of the larger problem, which was how the company deals with the mods who really run the different communities. I, I feel like with a place like Reddit like or YouTube, it's very important for the companies to recognize who their constituents are, right? Who their actual, the, the different crowds that they need to, 
to keep happy are. And I think maybe in the case of Reddit, they recognize that the readers are important and they've made things good for the readers with the upload system. They've recognized that the people that post are important. There's karma and various things mm -hmm. to keep them engaged. But maybe they haven't recognized the importance of the mods. And that's what it sounds like from your yeah. story, that they haven't. Whereas if you look on the flip side, if you look at YouTube, YouTube's done a, a pretty good job now. Early they didn't, but now in terms of people who actually have popular channels, mm -hmm. they take really good care of them. Yeah. You don't really see people uh, griping about not being treated well about YouTube, whereas they yeah. used to like maybe five years ago. Yeah, that's true. I mean, there are still gripes about certain aspects of YouTube. Mm -hmm. But it's minor, right? But like it's, you're always going to be gripes. Yeah, you yeah. Know? It's more like, why, you know, why can't I quickly moderate my channel in this in this specific way? Yeah. It's like, okay, great guy. And I mean, obviously, there's yeah. still, there are a lot of gripes about content ID and copyright mm -hmm. takedowns and stuff, but that's a different yeah. whole different, But I, but different I think discussion. maybe, I mean, as, as, a, as a reader part of that constituency and on mm -hmm. Reddit, like, I guess I don't really know what the mods do. Yeah. Um, and so maybe that's that's something that either, you know, Reddit maybe sees the maybe they 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 don't realize what you know how, how much work goes into modding or. Yeah, and I mean there've been a couple flare ups. I mean especially yeah. in the last couple of years, right? So two really popular, and there may have been more, but the two cases that I'm aware of, two very popular Reddits were removed from the default list, and it was yeah. the our politics and our technology. Oh really? Um, I didn't even know they were. Yeah, yeah, which you know to some extent sucked and a little bit for Tector because those were the only two that really. Well, you know, why were they sent removed? traffic to us? But what? Why were they removed? Um, the official uh, they continually kind of monitor those right like i mean atheism yeah. was removed a few years ago yeah well the um, official story was was that the the it was determined that the quality was low on <laughs> uh on on those and that until the mods did a better job um then yeah you know, i think our politics is very much kind of a circle jerk and right? and it and, and some of it got a little crazy and then there were some some mod wars where different mods were trying to like take over different things and mm -hmm. and there were some fights and there was you know our politics at one point put in this huge ban list where basically huh. uh, all sorts of sites including tector not that you know not that i mean maybe that impacts my bias but like <laughs> we're we're banned um and you know, there was this sort of weird fight over like why, you know, but, but it's, it, it brings up this weird thing, which is that, you know, uh, Reddit was always, you know, it, it, the mods have tremendous amount of power. Right. In terms but of But from what, the reader what, side, it feels like it's very user generated. It right. feels like it's very. Wait, can they actually you know, move posts up and down in the list manually? Uh, I don't know that they can do that, but they can remove posts. They can certainly yeah. uh, completely remove posts that they don't want, or they can block, you know, certain sites. They have ban lists, and and, yeah. they, and there's this whole concept of like shadow banning, where users can be banned without knowing it. So they post, and they think their stuff is getting posted, and nobody sees it. Really, um, you just feel like the unpopular kid. Yeah, and and so there's there's like there are a whole bunch of things in the background, which is, you know, for. Uh, you know, and, and I mean, all of this brings up questions of transparency, right? I mean, I think that's what it comes down to is that a lot of people have questions about, you know, when things aren't that transparent and, and when... Well, shadow banning is a very interesting thing. Uh, so it's, it sounds like you can basically ban a post and from the reader's point of view, you don't know, but the mod or mods know it, right? So that's that's almost like a case of them actually empowering the moderators and kind of... Uh, at the expense of the readers, right? Or the yeah. posters, right? Well, I right? think, and I, I, I think, and, and, you know, we can look this up, but I, I, I'm pretty sure that, that the company has said that shadow banning was a, is something they don't like anymore, that, that they had implemented it as a solution a few years ago, and it was, you know, something that was necessary at the time, but there are certainly a lot of complaints about the whole process of shadow banning um, and how it's done and how it's handled, uh, that... You know, I think the company wants to move away from that. Um, but what it really sounds like to me based on just that mm -hmm. and then based on sort of what's been happening recently is I think Reddit feels that the viewers or the readers are way more important than the moderators, right? Like just that thing about shadow banning. I can see how shadow banning might be the easiest way to deal with some kind of troll or somebody yeah, like sure. that who's just continuously harassing your subreddit, right? You just want him to go away and just want him to think that he's just unpopular, right? That's the easiest way to get rid of him. Whereas if you just actually outright ban him, he'll just make a new account, right? right? And so uh, that's a really, a really powerful tool. And the fact that they don't like that it kind of maybe to some extent that's not yeah. necessarily well, understanding it, how yeah. difficult it is to be a mod. I mean, you've modded things, so you know how it is, right? It's like, yeah, to some extent, well, I mean, it's, it's very hard. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we take a very, very, very light touch. I mean, basically spam filter. 
Um, and we don't go much beyond that. But, um, but yeah, I mean, it's, it's definitely tricky, and there are definitely things where sometimes you, you do, you know, there, there are questions raised about how do you handle these things. Um, and, you know, we're, you know, as communities get larger, I do think that the moderation questions become much more difficult. Um, and, you know, I mean, is, is, this is something you kind of alluded to in your introduction, but is there kind of like a natural cycle for these communities? Yeah, right? that, so that's, that's a question. At, at some point, you know, a credit, a, the community kind of grows up, it finds its own voice and it finds its identity. And at some point you kind of become the victim of your own success, right? So, yeah. And I mean, again, you can, you can go back to Usenet, right? I mean, yeah. Usenet, the, 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 what's I mean, famous is the, the September that never ended, right? What, so, no, I, so what happened? <laughs> so, endless September, <laughs> yeah, endless, endless November. Or yeah, it's the endless September, the September that never ended. Yeah, why was, did, I so, mean, aside from like a technology shift, why, why did so, Usenet go away? So what, what, what it used to be was people would say that every September, mm-hmm. Usenet would get crappy because new kids would arrive at college, <laughs> get access to the internet, get access to Usenet accounts, and just be idiots because they're right. you know just arriving at college. And then... I don't remember which year it was, 99, maybe? Uh-huh. And, um, no, no, earlier than that. I think actually 94 or something. Is that like when Deja News? When, no, no. no? It, was, it was before Deja News, but it was when AOL gave access to Usenet. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and, and suddenly the you un- had unwatched the, masses the September that never ended, and all of these people flooded Usenet, and the useful conversations just, you know. So there is this question of when a community gets to be a certain size. Right, right. Does it, you know, does it become impossible to keep that community, you know, useful and enjoyable right. because well, there's so many, you know, problematic people? I mean, there there are certain things, certain things about a community, like especially when new people arrive at a community and they don't, there's no posted rules or mm-hmm. or there's no conventions, and I think that you know Reddit definitely has Redditisms. Sure. That as you're, as, you know. As you've been a member of the community, even a lurker, a reader, you start to understand like there's a certain lingo and language. So, but I think that's true of most communities. No, that's that people, what I'm saying. People is that, learn that. Yeah. Yeah. But like when you when you have an influx of new people, all of a sudden, that culture is it kind of lost. Di- dilutes. It dilutes. Right. right. So people are. You and know, so the existing community, if they can't corral the newcomers into the right. the unwritten rules, then if there's no running. good onboarding. Like right. You know. Maybe there's there's other you know constructs in, in our society that have long standing traditions, and when new people are introduced, mm-hmm. then they go through some but, sort of. But an, I don't. In, you know, I mean, but I don't. I don't see or, that on Reddit, right? Right. That's what I'm saying is the problem. Well, some of the subreddits. No, 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 no. Are, I'm sorry. I, I'm, I'm hold on. I'm saying I don't see that the deterioration. The deterioration on Reddit. I think. That, are you kidding me? For, I, I, some subreddits are very bad. Some They're totally I, bad. Sure, but but. And in fact, I would say all the popular ones are no, garbage and, conversations. The the best ones are the smaller ones, right? Very, I, I, so so I'll, I'll agree that the the better ones are. But I don't think. But but what I'm saying is I don't think that the people who are, who are successful at commenting in Reddit and different subreddits, even the big ones, are sort of the newbies who don't know the the rules to to keep things going. Right? Yeah. They may be. You know, ridiculous, and maybe that the upvote system might kind of do a good job of corralling, you know, P- potentially the bad comments or the the bad actors, right? So, yeah, I, I mean, that's that's, that's potentially, but you know, I, so I don't, I mean, I don't, well, I don't know, right? No. So there there are questions of is it, you know, let me let me okay. give you just a couple of examples that of what makes me think it's not very you know, not necessarily of the highest sort of quality. If you go to, um, like, our politics or something like that, there's certain political figures, when posts appear about them, you are guaranteed that the topmost vote will be, depending on who the political figure is, a strong affirmation of the beliefs of that political figure or just a circle jerk, you know, sure. negative thing. And then that, that, but whereas... Like in a, a very high quality, like a much higher quality community, or, you know, like some of the subreddits, you will sometimes uh, find a highly voted contrary opinion, right? Under something that you would really expect for that subreddit to be not so highly voted, right? And I'm trying to think of like an example. Um, one from subreddits don't come to, to mind, but for example, on Hacker News, right, which mm-hmm. is essentially like uh, the entire site is like one single subreddit, right? Sure. It's, it's ba- that's basically what it is, and it's always about tech stuff, pretty much. Yeah. When you there was recently a 
a post or a thread about the Greek exit, mm-hmm. discussing the possibilities of Greek exit. And there was a huge diversity of views there. There was like a lot of people that were like, hey, you know, austerity is bad for Greece and, you know, not to get off topic, but like, you know, both sides were reflected. And there was highly voted and there was, it was very thoughtful kind of, uh, well, as thoughtful as it can get, I think, on the internet. Whereas the same conversation, you go on Reddit, on some of these subreddits, and it's just basically like uh, so anti-austerity, and it was just like very, uh, I mean, it's basically like Paul Krugman yeah, but, posting but, uh, every one of those posts. Yeah, uh, you know? yeah but, but I, I mean, I think that's a different issue, right? I mean, I don't think, so, so, what, so what, right? So, so different Reddits have, I mean, so different communities have different points of view. I don't think that's surprising. I think, you know, you know, you could argue that of, of almost any community, right? I mean, you could argue that of the tech community, right? I mean, for the oh, most you, part. You, oh, you're saying the, 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 the sort of the monoculture is not the issue. It's yeah, kind of, I, I don't think that that's, that's yeah. a, a big concern. And, and like, okay, maybe like there are concerns about that, but I think it's a different kind of concern, right? Got it's it, a concern right. about what kind of community you want to have, what kind of people you want to have in the community mm-hmm. and all that kind of thing. But is that a concern that, that uh, in regards to whether or not the community is sustainable? Um. And I don't, I don't see that. As as being, you know, as being a, a, as big an issue. For some communities, I actually do think it's an issue, and the issue is because if you go into a room and everybody agrees with you, it actually gets boring. Yeah, you, you want to go sure, somewhere sure, else and argue. But 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 I don't. Been on the internet I don't lately? think that's true, right? I mean, <laughs> I don't. I, I you know that's the whole thing. People always talk about like the either filter bubble mm. or the echo chamber or all this stuff, and I think that's a bunch of bullshit. I mean. Mm. The, in every conversation, someone is going to speak up and someone's going to complain, and it may be a minority of people, mm-hmm. and it leads to debate. And you know, a community may have an overall point of view, but there's always going to be dissenting mm-hmm. views, just because that's that is the internet. There's no community out there that is all 100 percent. Everyone is backslapping each other and agreeing, and that would be boring. But you don't really see that. People say that, but I, I, I'm I don't buy it. I, you know, and and I don't and I don't think that that. I don't think any community is at a lack of, you know, oh, you know, we yeah. need more disagreement to keep this community going. Probably Stormfront. <laughs> well, <laughs> maybe a different, you know that, yeah, right? different story altogether. But, but, you know, but let's bring us back to the question of, yeah. you know, can, is, is it, you know, so is there a business here? I mean, does, and, and this wasn't supposed to just be about Reddit. Obviously, Reddit is the one that everyone's talking about, and it's sort of an interesting case study. So maybe we should just focus on Reddit. But like, you know, is it is the problem that Reddit is trying to make a real business out of it? They raised fifty million dollars not too long ago, and they have to obviously get some sort of return for that, uh, or their investors have to get some sort of return for that. So they're they're obviously under pressure to build something that that does something more and, and that brings in more revenue and continues to grow. Is it possible to do that and not piss off the community. Yeah. I mean, I guess my question would be like, were these recent actions in terms of, you know, turning off or, or turning off these 300 subreddits and it making wasn't that many, I don't think, was it? It was, it was, it was a lot. I mean, I thought it was a small number, but okay. Um, but anyway, but what did that have to do with trying to make Reddit a better business? Like, was it well, because advertisers were shunning away from certain content, yes. which, you know, then I think, maybe that was the wrong move on Reddit's part. Like, if you turn off content, then you're kind of shooting yourself in the foot. Like, at the end of the day, the advertisers want eyeballs, right? Mm-hmm. It seems... In, well, I mean, it's... It see, like this is... This is move, right? Well, so. yes and no, right? And and I agree. And I think if I were in their shoes, I probably yeah. would not have m- made that decision. But I can I can understand it, right? So the argument is always going to be that, that advertisers want eyeballs... And so, you know, more eyeballs is good. But at the same time, there is also the, the counter, which is that, you know, someone is, and people are still complaining about, like, you know, there are plenty of subreddits that are racist and hateful right. in all sorts of ways. And it's very easy to then point that out to an advertiser and say, American Express, why are your advertisements appearing next to this racist content? And American Express, which is... Somewhat, you know, fearful sure. of their reputation, sure. pulls the advertisements. Well, right? what I'm what I'm saying is, it it feels like we have the technology now to solve that problem. Sure. So instead of serving an American Express, instead of serving that ad on that racist subreddit, instead of turning one way, sure, turn off the subreddit. That is a potential solution. But the other way that seems like a better one would be to not serve that ad. 
right? Sure. Mm-hmm. So just know what subreddits are going to be dangerous for certain right. advertisers, and just not serve it. Then. And and as far but, as but the, still like, even I, even even then, right? So and, and pl- I'm playing devil's advocate here, yeah, but sure. even then, the point, the pushback then is. American your, Express, your platform. Allows. Why are right? Why are you supporting a platform that enables hate speech and and whatnot? Yeah, and I mean, and and if American Express chooses to not advertise there, that that's to, that should be fine, right? And, and so, there are other so, advertisers so, that right. should be able to fill so, that so, gap. So, so the the response should be in in an ideal yeah. world is Reddit says, look. We believe in free speech, yep. and we are trying to enable this, and we're not trying to control the, the overall community, and you, the advertiser, needs to understand that. Yeah, and I think that this is, I mean, when, when I was at CNET, there was, you know, a, like, there was such a distaste for any time, you know, an advertiser was trying to dictate what the editors were writing about. Mm-hmm. And this feels like, you know, if this, if this is the case, um, and Reddit is trying to essentially change their content to appeal to advertisers, it feels very distasteful. Okay, but right? right. So again, I'm playing devil's yeah. advocate here because I'm. I don't. I mean, I recognize like user generated content is a very different beast right. to sell against. How so, does how does YouTube solve this problem? Because uh, they have the exact same problem, right? Um, they, I mean, get, I they have they, they so many have, advertisers. They probably have better targeting and better, you know. And there are yeah. a lot of racist videos on and, YouTube. And but YouTube also does have a fair amount of moderation in terms of pulling stuff down as well. And people complain and flag uh, certain content. And yeah. you know, YouTube has a whole team that. Well, that, I guess what I, what I'm saying is is that um, advertisers are not so afraid of the fact that there's an occasional distasteful video on YouTube, and there's a lot of them, right? right. Uh, and they're not so afraid of it that they that they shun YouTube. But, I think once a platform gets big, but enough, are ads shown on those? I mean, do you have to be you have to opt into the YouTube Partner program to get ads. No, right? no, but there's some ads now that just play in front of everything. Mm, I think I you don't still, think so. yeah, I think you still have to opt in, and essentially it becomes mm-hmm. like this thing where you opt in, and if you have like racist videos, maybe you're not invited. You're gonna, to, you're gonna yeah. get mm-hmm. kicked out of the ad program. Yeah. I'm tr- okay. Maybe you're right. I, 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 for and some reason, I thought that there was like some side ads on right. YouTube, but I might be wrong. But I think that, that that's actually like I think YouTube has a much more favorable position than say Reddit in mm-hmm. this case because the content creators are are kind of incented to create content right that yeah. gets mm-hmm. a lot of views and get and as a result attracts advertisers. Yeah, I mean, I where think Reddit. Like you get a lot of karma of votes. Like you're actually not you're not getting anything from it. Right? But uh, so. but, but that, that's a lot. Of, a lot of that content is actually not made by the posters, right? They're right. Just I think I think that's that's else. a big difference. Whereas yeah. whereas YouTube is a platform for the content itself. Right. Reddit is more just the community that links to mm-hmm. different yeah. content, and so it's it's a little bit different there. But um, yeah, it's an interesting discussion. Went a little bit different direction than I had originally <laughs> thought we were going to discuss, but still, still really interesting discussion. Um, and I know we're kind of running out of time, so uh, let's just, I guess we'll do some quick final thoughts. Um, and uh, I was going to say, you know, should we bring it back around to this general question or should we focus on Reddit? But I'll leave it up to you guys to decide in terms of final thoughts. Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, part of the trouble that Reddit's been going through might be that it's trying to, to figure out the business model. I, th- I feel like it's used a really heavy hand to address content that it doesn't like. And, you know, there are other better ways to address and sell. And frankly, it's like if you can't sell this huge of an audience and this engaged of an audience to an advertiser, it I, I find it hard to hard to keep these salespeople on. So, But that's just me being judgy. No, I, I actually agree with Dennis. I was going to say something along those lines. They, ha- they have such a huge, you know, quote-unquote viewership Mm-hmm. You know, uh, you should be able to monetize that somehow in some way that's not distasteful, right? Like, people still occasionally voice complaints about the way Facebook monetizes its user base, but they're doing it, and no one's leaving Facebook. It's you know, mm-hmm. some people. Well, yeah. it's very small. I mean, it's <laughs> still extremely popular. Uh, sure. It, it, this is a good topic for another day. Yeah, this is probably true. We need a whole other uh, topic about it. Well, Facebook. I mean, but that actually brings up another issue, and I'll use that as my final point, okay. which is that, you know, one of the interesting things about Reddit... Uh, as a community is the fact that unlike some other communities, it is actually pretty easy to leave Reddit and go somewhere else and find a similar community if you want to. Whereas I think like Facebook, there there is a sort of network effect that keeps you sort of locked into Facebook. And YouTube, there are things that sort of keep you locked into YouTube. Whereas Reddit, I think it's much easier for people to just say if they can find 
an equivalent community somewhere else to just go and leave Reddit behind. And I think that's a big yeah. challenge for Reddit. Yeah, and I, and I think that you know I've already started reading Dig actually again, um, and finding that to be a great source of content. And I think that's true. It's I think Reddit is it's a hard beast to kind of keep this t this type of a user generated community up and up and running. Well, there's a actually a Reddit clone that people were pushing on Reddit recently. It was yeah. called Vote or yeah. Rhymes with Goat. Yeah, vote, yeah, vote is popular, but it's but it's really slow. I think they're having. Well, some they had they had a lot of problems staying up, and then a lot of people have also pointed out that. You know, a lot of the people who went to vote from Reddit were kind of the the worst of the worst oh, on really? Reddit, and yeah. so so there. I mean, but someone's going to somebody else is going to come yeah. up, whether it's yeah. vote or somebody else, and they'll become popular, and it'll be interesting, and they'll become big, and then they'll have to deal with it. And maybe we'll maybe Metafilter will come back. I, I've always liked that. <laughs> that's another. That's another interesting stumble story, upon story is that about, another word? and stumble upon is still going. It's uh, still going yeah. And so there are a bunch of these, and it's kind of interesting to see or meme pool. Remember them? Yes. Um, to to see how these you know, change and, and grow. But uh, I think we're done okay. for now. But uh, thank you for being a part of our community. We promise never to grow so big <laughs> that, <laughs> that we'll have one of these fights. Don't, don't promise things you can't deliver. Like All right. Well, <laughs> feel free to remember this one when, when we become, you know, evil overlords of the Tectored Empire. Um, but thank you again. And thank you, Dennis and Hirsch. And we'll be back next week. Free.